Hey, good morning, my friends, divorcing gracefully sisters. I hope everyone's having a good Saturday. I just thought I would pop in today really unannounced and, and quite frankly, with no particular content per se that I wanted to put on the table. But this morning when I was going through my meditation time, something came to me and I was kind of listening to, after I was meditating, I was listening to um, just some inspiring words. And one of the concepts that came up was, do we follow our heart or do we lead with our heart? And it got me to think, because I, I often will say, wow, well, just follow your heart, right? That inner guidance, follow your heart, because it's always going to lead you in the right direction. Follow that heart because it knows where it's taking you. But then the whole concept came up of the follow versus lead. And the discussion was based around when you follow your heart, your heart is automatically, your brain and your heart and your mind are very much tied to the emotional state we're in at the moment. So if we just haphazardly follow something, then we tend to get caught in the tsunami of the emotions, the tsunami of where our heart is feeling at the moment. Is our heart filled with love and joy? Is our heart filled with sadness? And if we follow our heart that way, then we're going to be on the what I would consider to be the emotional roller coaster, the ups and the downs, right? Where what you're never going to know if where you're at at the moment because you're tied and you're anchored to the emotional state of your heart versus leading from your heart. Now, leading is very different. When we lead, we don't necessarily have to know exactly the way. We don't have to know exactly how we're going to get there. But what we are saying is we are making a decision. We are becoming decisive that we are choosing to take our life and our direction of where we're going and we're choosing to go in a certain direction. And we are leading our heart. And to me, as I started thinking about this more and more this morning, I realized that that is, I think, something that's very pervasive in our society and it's very pervasive in our own self-development work is this notion of we are following. There's a saying that says people are silently begging to be led. And when I first heard that statement, I actually took offense to that statement because I was thinking, my gosh, like that's a horrible statement that people are silently begging to be led. But then as I delved into it, I realized it's not necessarily a horrible statement, but I think sometimes it's easier to follow than it is to lead. Now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong to follow. I'm not saying it's bad or good to follow. But what I am saying is that if you're at a point where you know you are living less than your worth or that you are tolerating circumstances and people, places and things in your life that right now aren't what you know you want to be tolerating, well, that's an invitation to you then. And that invitation is, where can I step in to lead? Where have I fallen into following? And where can I adjust into leading? Right, And that's tapping into your heart. That's tapping into your divine. See, it's still the same thing. We're still tapping into that universal and divine energy, but we're not allowing that energy just to be haphazard, right? We're not tapping into the energy that's reactive. We're actually tapping into the energy that's responsive. And when we're, we're stepping into that energy that's responsive, we are now leading. This is something that I see across the board and even in my own life at certain periods is that I, I tend to get tired, right? That sometimes we just get very tired or we may lose a little hope or we may not have the anchors that are really giving us the guide to follow. So it's easier just to sort of sit back and just, again, follow. But here's something that I want to bring as a challenge to you today, is that if you're going to sit in the driver's seat of your life, you're going to be able to drive your car of life. But if you're going to sit in the passenger seat of life, then someone else is going to drive your life for you. Because that is the truth of the matter, is that if you don't decide what it is you want, and you don't decide what it is you're worthy of receiving. And if you don't decide what you will tolerate and what you won't tolerate, someone else is going to decide that for you. And if you're part of the Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond family, if you're part of the sisterhood and this tribe, and you're following me, then it's likely 
that you're looking to step into the next evolution of your life phase or to step into the next evolution of what your purpose is and what your passion is and to think a little bigger, to think differently. So I would invite you this weekend is just to take an inventory around you of what are you thinking about? Because here's the premise, as you can see it here, what we think about is what we bring about. And where am I following? Where am I leading? And where's there an opportunity for me to look at it from a different perspective? That's it. That's all we're asking, right? If, if we could look at something just from a different perspective, not to say you have to change it, not to say that you have to make an assumption about it. It's just from a different perspective. And Rita, thank you so much. Right. Rita is saying it's absolutely life changing because it, it truly is. When we look at it from this way, it's amazing what shifts we could take. Right. And I think there's another um, Kimberly was saying, you know, great message. I, I'm so glad, Kimberly. Thank you so much for for listening and tuning in this morning, because this these are the conversations we have to have, guys. Right. These are the conversations that no one around us is having. These are the conversations that we need to seek out and and, and find. Because if, if we're just kind of doing the same things and if we're around the same people and we're around just the same sort of, you know, day in and day out, again, I'm not saying it's necessarily bad, but what I am saying is if there's an evolution of self, you're not going to grow and you're not going to shift and you're not going to be able to step into that if you're doing the same things day in and day out. So with that said, take this time over the weekend and, and just do that inventory of where am I leading? Where am I following? What am I tolerating? What don't I want to tolerate anymore? What are the things in life that I need to put down, right? So maybe there's there's resentment that's there. Maybe there's unforgiveness that's there. Maybe there's the feeling of, I don't know if I could achieve this goal that I really want to do it, but I'm losing hope. Maybe I need to put that thought down and what thought do I need to pick up? So maybe I need to pick up the premise that I am an amazing creature, that I am a divine being, and that I have all of the tools necessary to create my life path and to go where I'm meant to be led. Again, we're leading and I may not have all the tools right now. I may not see the direction, but I know there's a map for me and I'm willing, ready and able to be open to receiving that map. That's what I'm going to pick up. And what am I not going to tolerate anymore is I'm not going to tolerate the negative thinking. I'm not going to tolerate the toxic people. Doesn't mean you have to be a bull in a china closet and remove yourself from everybody. But what it does mean is that you are going to make the choice that you're not going to stay around toxic people. That yes, and Kimberly, Nailed it. I love that you said this. Kimberly was saying using my voice is changing everything. It has to get uncomfortable before it gets better. And I'm so glad you said that. Thank you, Kimberly, for putting that out there. Because the uncomfortableness, this is the reason why a lot of us don't shift or change or elevate into this new evolution of self is because it feels uncomfortable. But that's because we have a feeling of uncomfortableness as being not necessarily a good thing. If we kind of look at our psychological well-being and our psychological fitness, when I call it our physical fitness, naturally speaking, we as human beings are going to tend to move towards things we like and we enjoy and that feel good. And we're going to move away from things we don't like or don't feel good or things that we don't enjoy. And that's because we've been told that feeling uncomfortable is a bad thing. We don't want to feel it. But guys, here's what I'm going to tell you. Feeling uncomfortable, honestly, is a gift. Because feeling uncomfortable is your miracle in the mess because it's giving you the opportunity to see what where you're at and what is the gift in the moment and what muscle is the universe right now asking you to, to develop and build because on your evolutionary soul journey, you're learning and we're learning lessons. And that lesson will keep coming into your path until you're ready to learn it and move through it. So that uncomfortableness, when that happens, turn around to the universe and say, thank you. Thank you for this uncomfortableness because I'm not going to make it mean that it's a bad thing. What I'm going to make it mean is, quite frankly, it may feel like shit. You may not like it, you may, but that's okay. But you're not going to make it mean that. What you're going to make it mean is 
I am going to look at this as my opportunity. That I'm going to look at this as there's something for me to learn. And what I know is the universe is conspiring for me, never against me. So if I am experiencing a challenge in my life or I'm experiencing something that's uncomfortable, I'm not going to make it mean that it's bad or that it's not right or that I don't want it. I'm going to acknowledge I may not want it. I'm going to acknowledge that it just doesn't feel right. But what I'm going to make it mean is an opportunity. I'm going to make it mean that there's something for me to learn here here because there always is. And as we learn is, is as we grow and as we grow, our vibrational level of frequency increases. And as we increase, we just naturally attract people, places and things that are going to guide us to our next levels. And I don't know about you, but I remember uh, a long time ago when I first began my spiritual journey, someone had said to me, Donna, as you move up that ladder in life, as, as you begin to shift and elevate from vibrational levels of frequency of what you're tolerating in life and what you're not tolerating in life. You know, so as you start moving, as you start to move away from the gossip and as you start to move away from the toxicity and the, and that thinking, people are going to try to pull you down off that ladder because they don't know how to handle you or work with you or be with you when you're at a higher evolutionary pace. And I thought, I thought that was very interesting because isn't that the truth? The moment you begin to grow or, or shift or change in your life, the people around you who needed you to be a certain way aren't going to like it. And they may very well try to bring you back to the person you used to be. And, and that's exactly what we don't want. And it's okay to send them love and white light, but you've got to lead your heart on your journey. You have to be the captain of your ship. You don't, you can't drive a car looking in your rear view mirror. Don't allow the people around you to pull you back. So with that said, this is just a quick little pop in today on Saturday. And I hope everybody has an amazing day. And Kimberly, is saying uh, growth mindset doesn't happen in comfortable. Uncomfortable equals personal growth. Yep, and that's so true. And you know, Kimberly, you had said that people get comfortable disrespecting you, and that is it's, it's very very true because people don't necessarily do this because they want to hurt your feelings. They don't do this because they're waking up in the morning and saying, let me hurt this person or let me see how I could get into this person's mind. What they're doing is they're trying to keep their life exactly the same because they're afraid of the growth. So if you're growing, that makes them fearful. So they, it's uncomfortable for them. So they're going to take it back. They're going to try to control you to bring that back. And it's your job to not fall for that. And it's also learning and developing the muscle. And guys, if I could close this broadcast today with one of the most important things that I teach, and that's learning how to be uncomfortable when someone is uncomfortable with you. That is one that's gold, guys. Learning how to be uncomfortable when someone's uncomfortable with you. Or in other words, learning how to be okay when someone is not okay with you. Right? You have to go on your journey. You've got to decide what am I willing to tolerate? What am I willing not to tolerate? What, what, what am I, where am I going? What do I want? And taking the time to clearly define that and not just follow where life is haphazardly, you know, leading you is we don't want to be a wandering generability. We want to be very decisive. We want to be very focused. We want to be very clear. You don't have to know the path. The universe will show you the path along the way, but you have to decide what it is you want. You have to decide your destination. You have to say and claim it, even if you feel you are not worthy of it at the moment. Because if it's in your heart, you're meant to achieve it, you're meant to receive it, and you're meant to experience it and step it up with everybody else around you. Because you are a very important uh, component of life and humanity in general, right? You, there are people, places, and things that need you. There are people in your life that you are going to touch, that you are going to model behavior for, that someone's gonna look at you and say, I want what she has. And if you're not, operating at your best self, if you're not living life in your most authentic version, if you're not in the ring of life, willing, willing to, 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 to be in that ring, then you may not be the salt that another person needs as their motivation to live their life, right? That we all are in this together, that as each and every one of us 
work on our own evolutionary journey and work on our own self from the inside out, we now liberate others to do the same. And when collectively we all come together, it's an amazing what can happen. And that's why I feel this divorcing gracefully and beyond community is so important is that I remember so long ago going through my divorce, post-divorce and all of the pieces, I could not find a community that was an up leveling of a community. I could not find a community that was positive, that we were together, that we were coming together as a whole to up level our lives. So I created one and I'm happy that you guys are here with me because this is the place guys. This is the place to come. This is the place to get your mindset in check. This is your place to do your psychological fitness. And this is the place we have fun. But this is the place to know that anything is possible. And it doesn't matter because it's your leading of the heart. If you're led to find and attract true love that lasts, he's out there. I just had a client the other day through COVID, through everything that was going on. She attracted and met the most amazing man that that she's extremely happy right i've had clients through covid through all of these terrible horrible times gain increases at work get promotions get jobs so where everybody else is saying this is not possible or this is possible don't believe it because you are getting that guidance only you can hear where your heart is guiding you and you're going to lead it to that direction so don't get caught up in the moment you get called to do something, the first thing that comes in your head is, I can't do it, or I don't know, I don't have the resources. Put that aside. Just put it aside temporarily and just allow yourself to just focus on where that heart is leading you. So I'm so glad you guys were here with me this Saturday morning. I hope everybody has an amazing rest of the day. And guys, guess what? It's my 50th birthday this weekend. Woo! So excited. So as of today, I am going to be signing off later on. I'm enjoying the day. My friends are taking me out. We're going to be spending the day going to dinner, um, sitting by the pool, hopefully if it doesn't rain, and just enjoying life. So I I wish you do the same, right? I, I hope that you enjoy this Saturday, that you enjoy it to the fullest. Have an amazing rest of the day, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Bye.